because we want to talk specifically about frying and we're going to talk about shallow frying. Yeah. So it's something that, you know, can elevate our cooking. What does it mean to do a shallow fry? So shallow fry is the complete opposite of a deep fry. Deep fry. Okay, I'm out of here. Thanks I feel everybody. Really I'm good. Smart. I'm out of here. <laughs> Thank you very much. Been a great show today. Um, yeah, it is shallow fry and it's important to talk about this because it's about safety. So yeah. I don't get me wrong. I love we all love deep fried foods, right? It's like it's yes. crispy, it's salty, it's savory, it's Sweet, whatever you're doing. Have you ever had a deep fried Mars bar? Yes. Ooh, yes. Beautiful. I had that CNE. It, yeah, they're fun. Yeah, right? yeah. So um, good. And so, anyway, it's just about doing it safely. So, a shallow fry is, again, two things good oil that is going to fry at a high temperature. Got it. And if you remember, what oil are we using at a high temperature? Canola point? or oil. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. A canola, a vegetable, something yeah. that is a very, you could use avocado. Right. Uh, it's got a very high smoke point again, but it's also very expensive. Yes. Uh, so Don't do what my kids do and throw in an, a, a batch of olive well, oil. That's just it. Extra virgin olive oil. Glug, 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 glug. Can you imagine? That's so much money. So there's two things you did they mention. They learned the hard way. They Don't ever do that again. Your, your like upholstery and your, you know, all of your bedding, all of your clothes yes. will smell two things. But one, when it, something has a very low smoke point, mm. it will start to burn quickly. You'll burn the food. You will set off the smoke detector, but you're also going to, that that smell that's going to, you know, omit in the air and so forth. So, it's again, put on your fan. You know, you want to be careful when you're doing it, right? So, high smoke point oil, which is the main thing here. So, high smoke point, as in canola or vegetable, uh, and a high walled pan. So, okay. as you can see, we're using a cast iron here. So, it's a cast iron, beautiful sort of Dutch oven style, yep. high walled pan. We do not want to be like, you know, again, a small little pan. You don't need something too crazy, but you're just placing in safely. And do you want the oil, you want the oil to cover all of whatever you're going to put in there if it's a shallow fry? Yeah, you know what, you could go almost full coverage or like 75% 80. Okay. Yeah, and all you right. can sort of just move it a wee bit. But again, as you see how we've set this up, yeah. you know, clean, we've got our tools, we've got some safety stuff just in case. I wonder um, what we should make. Let's make French fries. Let's make French fries. How about fancy kind, because you know we're going to do fancy-ish. Yes. But still approachable uh, and still affordable in your kitchen. Okay. So we're going to make truffle fries. I love truffle fries. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So do I. So, so russet good. potatoes, Yukon potatoes, something that's got, like, a good little fleshiness to it. Yeah. Um, you know, a, a potato, not necessarily, like, a baking potato, mm -hmm. but you want something that's got that little starch, which is interesting enough because you're going to pull out the starch. So when you make these, you know, at home, I think the magic question is when you're making fries at home, Home, mm -hmm. How do you get them nice and crispy, right? As opposed yes. to that sogginess. Yeah. So, rust potato, we're cutting everything in. Yep. And we're just cutting them into small little fries, small little fries. Yep. Essentially, what we want to do, this is part of the magic, is you want to have a little bowl of cold water. You okay. could leave them overnight or even just even an hour works. Yeah. You want to draw some of that starch out. So is that the whole point and putting it, it in is, the water? It is. So you're drawing the starch out, you're pulling out extra moisture essentially from it, which is weird to say, but you're pulling out that starch from yeah. it. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna let them sit. We've gone to one part here. We've let them dry, and we're yes. going to do, it's a two-part, so it's called par-boiling or par-cooking. Yeah. So we're going to par-fry. So these have been, from here, cut into pieces, left overnight. We're pulling out that starch. You want to dry them completely. One thing, oil and water do not mix, right? Oil yes. and water do not mix. Make sure they are dry, dry. when you put them in so the So we fire. have dried them here. These are already dry and ready to go. Okay. What I've done, actually, because this is TV, yeah. we've already par-cooked these once. Okay. So we par-cooked them, meaning we've dropped them for two minutes. Yep. And that's what's going to give the secret. So there's a science here. There's a science yeah. of why they're, you know, crispy outside and soft in the middle. A pillow. I think, yes. you know, I think I, a little pillow softness. On the inside. A little pillow softness. Crispy on the outside. Thank you. So you put them you in. You can write for Hallmark with they that kind of stuff. They did too. They did a couple good. of minutes in there. Yeah. You took them out and you dried them again. Dried them again. Right. You want to sit them, paper towel, put them on a, you know, a little paper towel. If you want to be running tray. out of your kitchen because everything is popping up out of that frying pan, put totally. wet things in there. Yeah, <laughs> no, honestly, right? It, it is not. Vibe. It is not. So, again, we're just going to get as much as we can in. And these yes. have been, so we've, again, what did I say? We've cooked these already once. And, and this is what's going to make them crispy, And yeah? this is what's going to make them, them crispy. In. So it is that par fry. So yeah. as we do this again, you really want to contain and make sure to watch and look after your oil. Yes. So you're not you're not walking away. You're staying here. You're focused. Yes. You're being with it. You're one with the oil. Well, while we stare, um, while we stare I'm at one, our I'm oil. One, I'm one um, with the oil. I'm one with the oil. I want to talk yeah. about because since we have a little bit of time yeah. now, when these guys come out, 
What are you going to do with that oil? So, great are question. Are you going to keep it for five years like we did? Right, exactly, <laughs> like our parents did and just keep it somewhere. I remember helping like my neighbors, like, you know, we were saying too, like, take the deep fryer down and you're like shaking this all around. And great it's question. Like filled with oil. So you can reuse oil. You yeah. can, you can. So when this is done, we're going to let it cool. And obviously, I might have a bigger one for all this oil. Yes. But you would have a bigger container and a bigger sieve, and you just want to strain it. Strain it, clean it. You can keep reusing oil. Because you want to get the chunks out. You want to chunks and take it away. You can keep reusing oil multiple times. Okay. Rule of thumb generally is like five. You will five know what? five times. <laughs> okay. Instead five of five years. That's like five, five days? Months. Five months or five So years? you will know when your oil starts to go off. It can turn in color. It will go musty. It will go like almost a rancid. Rancid. Again, two things. Keep oil always out of direct sunlight. You want yes. it in a cool spot. Yeah. Right? Um, and when this is going to be done, mm -hmm. you want either, if you're going to use this again, strain it and you want to let it cool, you can sit it on the pantry, but I like to put it in the fridge if you're going to throw it out. If you're not going to use this, yeah. take it, remove it, let it harden in the fridge or freezer yeah. and dispose of it. You can throw it, you can throw it in the trash. Okay. There is certain restaurants, if you go online, you can look, there is actual disposal park places They'll that you can your collect oil. your oil. Yeah. So the other thing that you said your mom taught you from a very young yes. age is the oil never goes down the sink. The, the sink, the drain. Don't ever, don't ever put it down the drain. Or the so, washroom or the toilet, yeah, anywhere no, like, No, none you know, of those like, places. Yeah, none of those places. So it, you're, you're going to either keep it or you're going to make it cold 100%. so that it solidifies 100%. and then you can throw it out. But it is good that you said, I'm glad you brought up the reuse part because it is important. Absolutely. You can. It is. That's yeah. good oil. Why what are we not? doing here for a second? As you know, like anything that comes out, we're seasoning. Yes. We're always seasoning. Do you want to do a little quick season with me? Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the sure. The salt bay action here. There I was go. salivating higher, while higher, watching higher. you. Oh, sorry. You gotta go higher. It's a, yeah. And thank you. <laughs> and it's not just to be fancy, but you get even distribution. Oh, is that what it that is? That is what it is, T. Okay. So we're going to go right in. These are obviously truffle fries. As you saw, I just put them into a little uh, paper line tray. And I can see that they're like shatteringly crisp now. They are shatteringly crisp. We're going to hit okay. it with a lot of Parmesan cheese. Nice. Let's get a little bit of truffle oil. I love white truffle oil. Me too. I know we're just going to garnish this. Oh, I'm yeah, I'm going to do baby. hit that with a little bit of that. Yeah. A little bit of fresh thyme. And you've got $30 fries in a restaurant, probably for a fraction of price at home. Beautiful. If you want to recreate uh, these fries at home, go to our website, cityline.tv, to get the recipe. That's right. You're putting more cheese.